In the last 34 days, the numbers, many of us know them, uh, 11,000 Palestinians have been killed. In the last 30 days, over 3,000 of those Palestinians were children. In the last 34 days, uh, we've seen uh, 1,400, now they've revised it to less than 1,200 Israelis being killed. And there seems to be no end in sight. There seems to be no end in sight. And somehow the message has not gotten to the leadership of Israel or the leadership of Hamas for that matter that mutual infanticide is not a road to peace. That is, me killing your babies and you killing my babies is not a road to peace. We can figure out that the more this happens, the more this happens. And all we have to do is look at the history of Gaza over the past 10, 15 years, and we've seen this over and over again. Why should we as Muslims be particularly concerned about this situation? One, we are people of justice, right? And we are concerned when we think anybody is being treated unjustly any place in the world. We read the Quran, we know this. But we are particularly concerned when we see people who are Muslims who are being treated unjustly. And so we have two responsibilities there. First, the general responsibility to humanity, and second, a responsibility to Muslims in particular. And the third, uh, and the third reason is that uh, this, uh, I'm sorry, the second reason is that this is Al-Quds, that uh, the part of the world that this is going on in is the third most holy place for Muslims, and that we should be concerned for that reason. First, we should be concerned as people of justice. Second, and these are things you already know, they remind us that Al-Quds is located there, and it's not, the control of Al-Quds is not in Muslim hands. And then uh, third, uh, we should understand that our tax dollars, the money that we pay in taxes, and most of us pay taxes directly or indirectly, are being used to fuel this conflict. That uh, the ammunition is being used, comes from the United States, support comes from the United States, and so therefore, if you're a taxpayer, you should be concerned. And so the numbers, I said, are pretty, pretty big. And so what do I mean about leading from jail? The reality is, is that this is a very difficult time of test. Allah Ta'ala tests us in different ways. And when we look at this time, our heart bleeds, our tears are flowing, and sometimes we want to react in anger and say things that are not based on our deen. I would suggest to you that if you look inside of our deen, you'll find people who have led, even when they were incarcerated, in difficult situations. The one that you might come to mind is Yusuf in Surah Yusuf, Yusuf alayhi salam. And you know the story better than I do. The whole story is, is told in Surah Yusuf, uh, how he came to his father, Yaqub, and talked about uh, the stars uh, uh, prostrating to him. And you know the story, and I'm not going to go through the story. You know it better than I. And in spite of the fact that he was betrayed by his own blood, in spite of the fact that he was sold into bondage, in spite of the fact that he's betrayed by people in the household that he was and falsely accused, he's remained true to la ilaha illallah. He remained true to this. Allah Ta'ala gave him a special kind of knowledge, and we know the rest of the story. Not only was he, uh, was uh, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam a prophet, but he was a civic leader at that time because he was given civic responsibilities in, in Egypt at that particular time. So that's one example. A second example we'd like to talk about is El Haj Malik as Shabazz, right? And we read about Yusuf alayhi salam in the Surah Yusuf, but El Haj Malik as Shabazz, many of you have already read this, but if you have not read this, if you want to understand uh, Islam in America and understand the transformative nature of Islam in America, particularly in the population that's incarcerated, where there are lots of Muslims right now as we speak you should read the autobiography of Malcolm X, which was uh, first released in 1965, and I read it in 1967, and mashallah, alhamdulillah, it was one of the reasons that Allah Ta'ala 
led me uh, to Islam. And so that's the second leadership from jail. Yusuf alayhi salam as a prophet, right? And as a civic leader, uh, Al-Hajj Malik al shabazz who became a, quote, civil rights leader and then ultimately a human rights leader that when he, when by the time he died, he was saying things like, I am for truth, no matter who speaks it. I am for justice, no matter who is for it and against. And I'm a human being first and foremost. And as such, I'm for whomever and whatever benefits humanity as a whole. So lest you think that we have to look at people who are no longer with us, I want to suggest the third book. The Quran is first. The autobiography of Malcolm X is second. The third book is a book called Better, Not Bitter. Better, Not Bitter. It's a book by a brother named Yusuf Salam. Some of you have heard of him before. He just got elected to the city council in the city of New York. And he released this book in 2021. Again, the story some of you are familiar with, some not, I recommend you become familiar with. Yusuf Salam was uh, unjustly accused of rape in the Central Park Jarga case, which is very famous in 1989. And he was incarcerated unjustly and ultimately he became part of what's called, it was called the Central Park Five, and he became the Exonerated Five. The thing to understand about uh, Brother Yusuf is that uh, he said in the beginning of the book, if you pick up the book, he says, they did not know who they had. He was talking about the jail. They did not know, the police didn't know who they had. He drew strength from his name. That's why it's important for us to give our children uh, Muslim names, right, that, that mean something, that will inspire them. He said he was inspired by his name. He was inspired by Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. His name was Yusuf. And he was inspired by that example, and that took him through this experience of being locked up and unjustly accused, and he ended up becoming, going to school, becoming a doctor, uh, Dr. Yusuf Salam, and writing this book, Better not bitter. In other words, many people are incarcerated and they come out bitter because of the racism in the system, because of the way they're treated in the system. And so this is another book that you might look at uh, uh, in terms of understanding how we lead from the jail. That Prophet Yusuf alayhi uh, salam, uh, uh, Brother Malcolm X, and Brother Yusuf Salam. And so uh, if you look at this, you can see that there's rich, rich, rich heritage that we have in terms of leadership when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, ethical leadership in difficult times. Uh, when we look at the issue of, of Philistine, I want to uh, close by uh, talking very briefly about a friend of mine who's from Gaza. He was born in, in, in the Javalia refugee camp and he's now a medical doctor, and he lives in Canada. In 20, 2009, in a similar, similar so-called uh, incursion, the Israeli, uh, the Israeli IDF, using a tank, shot tank shells at his house and killed three of his daughters and a niece. Three of his daughters and a niece. So what did Dr. Abulash, is his name, Isaldeen Abulash, what did he do about it? First of all, he, he, you can hear him. He actually was on a radio interview when it happened, and the first thing he said is, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, they've killed my daughters, Ya Allah. He was literally 10 feet away from his daughters when they were killed. Remember, he's a medical doctor at this time, OBGY especially, and he's like 10 feet away from them, and when the idea of shot into the apartment, he literally had just talked to them. He had walked out of the room. Had he stayed in the room, you know, he might have been killed at the same time. He walked in the room and literally saw the brains of his daughters on the ceiling because of the shells coming through. What did he do as a result of this? Well, one thing he did, he's called on Allah first. The second thing that he did is that uh, he began talking to people about bringing the Palestinians and Israelis together to make peace and he started educating people about the, the occupation 
of, of Gaza by going around and speaking to people. And occupation is a word that many Israelis don't use, but in 2003, Ariel Sharon, who was a very famous uh, Israeli general, he said in, in 2003 in the, C, in, a, in the CNN post on the internet, he said that occupation is not good for Israel or for the Palestinians. And so this is a guy who's a war hero who became a prime minister. He was saying it back in 2003 that it wasn't good. It wasn't good then and it's not good now. And so uh, uh, Dr. Abu Laish goes around, he speaks about how he grew up in the Jabalia refugee camp. Those of you who follow the news like I do in Al Jazeera, you've heard the name of that refugee camp over and over again during the past 34 days because the IDF has come back over and over again and pounded the refugee camp where Dr. Abu Laish uh, was born. I've been in touch with him. He's in, uh, he's in He's in Canada by email, and I was asking him how his family was doing. He's lost some other family members. This is four or five days ago. He's probably, he possibly be a lot of protect and preserve the rest of his family that's still in Gaza, but this is the situation that Gazans are facing. And then if you look at Dr. Abu Laish, what was his response to it? He called on Allah to Allah, number one. Number two, he became a spokesperson for the Palestinians highlighting what occupation really is like under the Israelis. He's been doing this for many years. I actually met him in 1990 when I was working at Manhattanville College. And you know how you meet uh, Muslims and you see them and you meet them, like uh, Brother Tawheed here, you meet them the first time and you know you just have a connection with them because they, you feel Islam. You don't have to have a long conversation. Dr. Abu Laish was this kind of person in 1990 when I met him. And then he wrote a book, aside from calling on the law, aside from uh, educating people, uh, he also, in 2011, he, he established something called the Daughters for Life Foundation that has educated more than 300 young Middle Eastern women because he feels that one of the problems in the Middle East is that there are not enough educated women who can speak up about the situation. And so Dr. Abu Laish is making a difference in terms of education, making a difference in terms of calling the attention to the abuses uh, that his people live on at, in Israel. And he also wrote a book called I Shall Not Hate. He wrote it in 2012, and I read the book, and I recommend it to you because this is a man who does not wear his Islam on his sleeve, but he's motivated by the Quran with Sunnah in terms of his understanding of what we should do in the situation in Palestine. He's a Palestinian himself who's lived with the abuses of the Israeli occupation for many, many years, and he goes back and forth there time and time again. And so these are four books that I would recommend to you. One, the Quran, the Surah Yusuf, the two, uh, is the book, uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X. Three uh, is, is the book, uh, Better, Not Bitter. And four is I Shall Not Hate. I'd like to close by saying uh, uh, two things. One is that the kind of education that we give at the Islamic Seminary of America is the kind of education that we hope to produce leaders like uh, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Malcolm X, uh, 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 Dr. Yusuf Salam, and my friend, Dr. Isadine Abu Laish. Uh, those people, all of them are rooted in Islam, firmly placed in Islam. You can tell that their, 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 their focus is on Quran and uh, focuses on serving Allah and the principles that we find in the Quran. Uh, the second thing, is that, the, that we try to teach people to deal with the context that they're in. We saw Prophet Yusuf salam, dealt with different contexts, right? But always consistently calling on Allah and trying to do what Allah Ta'ala says. We saw that with, with, we saw how Malcolm X grew into this. We saw how at 15 years old, Yusuf Salam, he grabbed onto his name in Islam and he came out 
better, not bitter. And we saw Dr. Isaldine Abulaish do the same in terms of looking at the context that they were in and trying to make it better. The third thing that we do at the Islamic Seminar of America is that we provide a rigorous fact-based education. A lot of us look at the situation in Gaza and we react to it. Rather than reacting, you know, with no context, we should be rigorous in trying to understand these situations to see what we can do about them like, uh, like our role models would do. So the education that we try to provide is, is rooted in Islam, Islamic principles. It's, uh, it is, it is uh, relevant to the, the current context that we find ourselves in, and it's academically rigorous. The final thing I'd like to say is that some of you might have seen uh, the advertisements for the Youth Mental Health First Aid Workshop that we were planning to have here tomorrow, but because we didn't get enough people to sign up, we're going to try to postpone it and have it within the next uh, couple of months and try to be more diligent in getting people to sign up for it. The Youth Mental Health First Aid uh, Workshop is an attempt by the Islamic Seminar of America to give back to the community. There's a mental health crisis in the United States. There's a mental health crisis amongst young people. There's a mental health crisis in the Muslim community. In the past 34 days, believe it or not, has added to that crisis. And what the Youth Mental Health Workshop is about is training adults to help young people who are dealing with mental health issues up to and including suicide. And so it's a certification program uh, it's, it's like taking first day training, and inshallah, the next time you hear about it, we hope that you will sign up for it. So may Allah Ta'ala bless and protect the people of Philistine and all people, oppressed people around the world. May Allah Ta'ala make us people of justice, make us people who are rigorous about adhering to our deen, make us people who deal with the current context with knowledge, May Allah Ta'ala save us all from the hellfire. Save us all from the hellfire. Save us all from the hellfire. Ameen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I know you've been very patient with me. We'll take two or three questions and we'll close. I've got a really good friend who knows this guy, Chris, and the guy's really qualified. And he's a plumber. So thank you for your time and thank you for hosting me. Uh, inshallah, if you want to learn more about Islamic Seminary of America, I forgot to bring my brochures, uh, you can go to our website at islamicseminary.us. Our website is islamicseminary.us, and you can, find, uh, you can find the information about us there. You'll also find me there, Jimmy Jones. Uh, I'm james.jones at islamicseminary.us. And if you, want, if you want to speak to me a few moments uh, after we close, uh, I'll be here for a few moments. But again, thank you for your hospitality. And inshallah, we'll... we'll, we'll. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's good to see you. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah.